बुक इन्विन्सिबल थिंकिंग रिटन बाय रिहो ओकावा नरेटेड बाय गायत्री रुपारेल प्रिफेस टू द न्यू एडिशन दिस बुक रिटन इन एन इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड वे गिव्स अस क्लूज अबाउट हाउ टू सक्सीड इन लाइफ सिंस इट वॉज फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड इन नाइनटीन इट हैज़ सोल्ड इन एक्सेस ऑफ टू मिलियन कॉपीज इन जापान and has become a favorite among leaders in every field including politicians and corporate managers it has also appeared in translation allowing readers throughout the world to appreciate it its ideas the happy science which i found is the largest religion in japan and continues to grow taking its place among the major religions of the world however at this time many countries are becoming increasingly disorganized both politically and economically causing great unease among their people for this reason i wish to spread this message of this book which teaches that there, there is no such thing as defeat imbuing people with courage and hope the aim of this book is to enable readers to become outstanding leaders capable of showing others the right path invincible thinking is a philosophy that allows people to succeed in any situation it is a methodology that makes it possible to find lessons in both success and failure thus encouraging the development of leadership it is a method of shaping your future in all weathers using a combination of positive thinking and self reflection riho okawa president happy science part 1 the source of invincibility 1 the quality the qualities required of a leader people are constantly trying to find out how the times they live in will evolve they think about what is of true value and the direction in which they should be headed and they seek someone who can give them answers and guidance so to be an outstanding leader you need to be able to point others in the right direction many people in this world are uncertain of how to make the best use of their abilities their time and their money a leader must be able to explain future trends and what people need to do in present concisely and accurately this is the mission of those who have truly awakened to be a leader what do you need to do this will be the theme of this book what qualities are necessary for a leader firstly you must always be able to see into the future you need to be able to see one or two steps further than others people regard someone who is more able to predict the outcome of events as outstanding or possessing exceptional abilities in the same way that a very tall person is able to see much further than anyone else people believe that someone who is outstanding is capable of seeing things more clearly because of a greatness of character or because of spiritual abilities gradually those around a person possessing this qualities will be attracted to what they see as the person's enigmatic personality and will follow willingly i said that the ability to see into future is one prerequisite for leadership but this alone is not enough if you foretell only the possibility of failure or give examples only of lack of success although you may initially be regarded as a leader people will soon drift away many people have gathered at the institute for research in human happiness of which i am president and i suppose the reason for this is that they have the expectation that if they join something good will happen no one would congregate in a vessel that they felt was going to sink it is because people anticipate that something good will come out of it that they join our movement and wish to be a part of it so the second prerequisite to be a leader is an ability to make people feel that if they follow and stay close they can expect a bright future something good will happen the third prerequisite for leadership is not only to have the power to open up a bright future but also to have enough past achievements to convince others of your standing however these accomplishments do not necessarily have to be a constant series 
of distinguished awards for excellence no matter what kind of life you have led people look to the way you have overcome difficulties you have faced find the qualities of outstanding leadership there if you look at the lives of great historical figures you will notice that very few came from privileged backgrounds even if that they had the blessings of being born into good circumstances at some point in their lives the tides of fortune always turned and they suffered a severe setback or faced adversity usually these people were not born into a comfortable environment but developed great strength by overcoming the obstacles in their lives through their own efforts others find indescribable strength in the resilience of such people so far i have pointed out three qualities that are required of a leader in this book i am going to introduce invincible thinking a philosophy indispensable for leaders in this new era invincible thinking is an attitude no matter what happens in your life you can always find something positive and turn any situation to your advantage if you practice this philosophy you will become convinced that there is no such thing as a crisis or hardship only a continuous series of opportunities number 2 self reflection creates leaders perhaps you dream of how good it would be if all your wishes could be realized and paths opened up for you with ease however in actual fact you learn more from the process of going through the ups and downs of life take health as an example some people are always full of strength and vitality perhaps they rarely take time to think much about their physical condition however if they ask whether illness as the opposite of good health brings only unhappiness you will find the answer is not as negative as you imagine why is it that people occasionally fall ill there is always an entire stage a preliminary period before they become sick when they perceive the signs that something is wrong the bodies begin to ache they do not feel so good or they are not able to work as they usually do in a sense this is nature's way of telling to stop and rest when people take good health for granted they do not know how to rest unless they become ill when you are about to burn out from working too hard it is sometimes happens that you are given a temporary rest by falling ill so you will be able to live out the full span of your days and carry out your mission as a result of an illness your life in, is in fact lengthened if you had not some if you had not become ill you would have burned out and left this world before your time so to avoid this your health breaks down and you are forced to undergo a period of recuperation what exactly is the significance of this recuperation it is not just a period of physical rest it is a time when you become introspective and look calmly at the inner self when you become absorbed with outer events and concerned only about outcomes you tend to forget to look within to make this easier to understand let us take the example of a man working in sales department of a company when business is going well and he is bringing in lots of new accounts and customers does he have time to think carefully about himself is there enough space in his mind to consider his family or other people in most cases the answer will be no all he can think about is getting through each situation as it arises if he has set himself a target of selling 15 automobiles a month he will be delighted if he achieves it he will be quite satisfied with his performance and will perhaps set a target of 18 vehicles for the following month however people like this who focus solely on results and whose minds are always looking outwards will eventually encounter setbacks the reason for this is that in most cases they will forget to consider the customers and whether they are truly happy with their purchases 
when things are not going well people tend to be preoccupied with their own satisfaction and pleasure to the exclusion of all this in other words they forget to consider other people's feelings a good sale in the truest sense is a sale that continues to bring joy even after the transaction has been completed on the other hand if a sales person is interested only in figures and results instead of the product itself he or she will not realize if customers regret their purchases and feel unsatisfied as these sorts of people struggle to get ahead in a very competitive society they cannot afford to care too much about others they adopt a false positive attitude and judge everything by results not a few people believe themselves to be headed for success unaware that they are living as a false self these people will not achieve great stature unless they experience setbacks at some point in life a setback may occur either at work or it may come in form of an illness nature will always provide you with opportunities for self reflection when this happens you usually become intensely introspective and this time actually is very important for your soul those who have never looked into depths of the inner self or studied themselves deeply can never become true leaders number 3 trials are necessary for spiritual growth returning to the example of the salesman let us imagine that his sales record continues to increase without his showing any consideration for others until he is the top salesman in the company and is rewarded with a promotion to the position of sales manager up to now he has been able to work at his own pace and has been evaluated only on results however now that he is the manager of the sales department what will become of those who work under him he will try to make his staff adopt his methods in other words the only instruction he will give them are sales targets and how many cars they should try and sell each month if they are incapable of achieving his these goals he will consider them incapable of doing the job and see them as a burden on the company but if they succeed he will value them as good workers this is the only criterion by which he is able to evaluate his staff on seeing the sales records he will gradually get more and more frustrated because although he is confident he can sell 15 units a month his staff are only capable of selling 3 to 5 units per month while a good manager would take subordinates aside and teach them to go about winning more orders this type of manager will want to make the sales himself he will go over the head of subordinates contacting customers or managers of other companies directly to make deals the subordinate in question will become increasingly disenchanted with the job and say if you want to do it yourself you are welcome to it as a result subordinates will not develop into efficient sales people the reason this particular manager behaves in this way is that he has only ever been interested in his own success this is all he has learned he has never really given much thought to human psychology he has probably done his job in a selfish pushy way in fact people who do well in sales departments often tend to be egotistical and barely capable of self analysis this kind of people are quite happy to barge in on others and do business believing they are well liked and that everyone is open with them however in reality as soon as this sort of person leaves an office everyone heaves a sigh of relief the person in question would never even notice people like this have no idea how selfish they are and they make a sales speech with the firm belief that everyone is their friend this is a very common story subordinates who are cautious or sensitive will never be able to act brazenly as their manager 
they will not be able to follow his example or his instructions on how to do their job so they will use their own ingenuity and draw upon their strengths for instance they may take up a hobby and use it as a topic of conversation to get closer to clients or emphasize friendliness as a way of promoting sales however the sales manager will find this sort of approach very frustrating to watch people like this sales manager need to be let their souls rest at some point in time they need time to recuperate only when they themselves have experienced misfortune or adversity will they be able to understand the feelings of others they usually believe themselves to be indispensable to the company and think that nothing will get done unless they are there however when they are ill and discover that in their abs- absence things actually run smoothly without them they are shocked the biggest shock comes when their colleagues come to visit them in hospital and say everything is fine in the office so please don't worry about work these words of comfort are actually very painful to such people because they are really hoping that their colleagues will come and beg them to return as soon as possible so that everything will run smoothly again this sort of experience shatters their reality it is as if these people were clowns while they were completely absorbed performing their own dance beneath the spotlights the entire audience has disappeared without their realizing this sort of people need to go through some kind of ordeal and it is not a backward step but an experience that is essential for them if they are to develop greater stature number 4 learn all you can from an ordeal when those who are efficient begin a new job they go to great lengths to try and prove how well they can do it the behavior is contrary to the love that gives that our institute teaches it is instead a love that takes a love that craves craves praise people who behave like this are eager to win the admiration of others and if they do not receive it they try even harder strangely enough the harder they try the more they are given the cold shoulder by those around them this is quite hard for them to understand you too may have experienced that the harder you try the less you are appreciated these overly eager people will eventually realize that they were actually taking love when you see people trying hard to win praise and recognition you feel that by giving praise something will be drained or taken from you when you praise someone who is trying so hard to make this happen you feel that you are losing something among those around you you can probably easily identify the people who act as if they want praise are there some among your relatives or colleagues who feel covertly desire recognition and praise these are usually the people the very people you find it hardest to compliment and so they even try harder the vicious circle continues until eventually others begin referring to them as show offs and this is when the dilemma starts these people feel disappointed because although they are doing their best no one recognizes their efforts then they begin to feel that the world is a very unfair place full of people who are unable to appreciate the efforts of others in actual fact when you are struggling to be recognized you cannot see others good points when you are concerned only with the getting the recognition for your own efforts you tend to be under illusion that other people are just there to support you in other words those who are concerned only with their own success never bring happiness to others people are very sensitive if they do not feel happy when they are with the sort of a person they will start to keep the distance then they will begin to criticize become nasty and say negative things about a person who demands praise this is how a situation like this steadily worsens quite the opposite of what was hoped for so even if you suffer a setback at work or the tide turns against you do not see this negatively it offers you the chance to strengthen your soul 
while at the same time allowing you to gain a deeper understanding of other people you may have been so self centered that you believe the company could not function without you but in reality you will see things running smoothly even in your absence unfortunately this is the way the world works in business if one person steps aside there is always someone else to take his place even a president who is often considered indispensable soon finds someone will appear to take his or her place in other words in an office a job is done not just by one person but is a result of team work of staff you can demonstrate your abilities because of the efforts of others this is something you must never forget so if you are in throes of some setback or adversity look back at the way you have lived for last few years or past few decades check and see that you have not allowed your life to get out of balance or that you have not thought only of your own recognition and forgotten to give others credit for what they have done i would like you to ponder on this it is very important to be able to look at yourself in this way there are numerous occasions in life when you are presented with an opportunity to grow and those who emit true light have undoubtedly managed to overcome hardships in the past people who have trumped over hardships and have been able to turn it into strength will shine from within while those who have allowed themselves to be swept away by adversity will be forever in its shadow and give out darkness no matter what the difficulty you face it will not last for very long so it is important to take advantage of the opportunity it presents and learn all the lessons it offers number 5 do not live a life of excuses When faced with misfortune make sure you do not allow yourself to feel you are the one only one person ever to find yourself in such circumstances the same is true for those who are ill and those who face a setback or failure connected to their ambitions people tend to feel that they are the only ones who have ever had to face such a situation When adversity strikes open your eyes and heart and look at the people around you you will realize that those who are successful are not only the people who have always known good fortune among them are certainly people who have experienced failure or adversity who made the utmost effort and used their misfortune as the springboard for success try to think about how many other people there must be who are in the same boat as you there are many kinds of illnesses for instance heart disease cancer and numerous psych- physical ailments whatever your condition you are not the only one suffering this illness in most cases there will be others who are afflicted with the same condition Franklin D Roosevelt open bracket 1882 to 1942 bracket close was the well known president of united states who was confined to a wheelchair usually people who have to depend on a wheelchair to move around find it difficult to be socially active but despite his disability he was able to carry out his presidential duties He was a great man in that he did not live a life of excuses but rather did whatever he felt had to be done He was willing to make everyone every effort to overcome his disability There is another example in the United States of a woman who succeeded in reaching one of the highest positions in the country She lost her husband when she was still young was rejected by her children fell into poverty and became seriously ill 
not withstanding her miserable circumstances she was able to rise to one of the highest positions in government people such as this have come to understand important lessons in life through adversity those who even from the depths of adversity are able to reach heights that ordinary people would never aspire to all have something in common i would like to explain what i discovered through studying them firstly they never attribute their hardships to others they never put the blame on to others or bemoan their fate because they understand clearly that this would do no good whatsoever the first key is not to blame fate or other people for any personal hardship secondly they accept what fate has given them they do not complain if only that had never happened instead they accept whatever bad luck or adversity has come their way in accepting it they are seeing it as a reality and considering how they should go about overcoming it they have the courage and determination to accept misfortune as a reality of life thirdly no matter what kind of adversity they face they always find some lesson in it they ask themselves just what it is that a difficult lesson is trying to teach them and search until they find the answer the lesson that they learn becomes without exception a priceless treasure that remains in their hearts for a long time fourthly they never try to rely on the support of others no matter what their disabilities they walk the path they have been given alone with a free and independent spirit never forgetting to make the effort to help others to make never forgetting to make the effort to help themselves they accept their fate and their present state for what it is but they do not let the status quo quo continue they attempt to break out of their difficulty relying on their own strength all extraordinary people go through this process people who allow themselves to wallow in self pity never achieve greatness and many give in to the temptation to wallow however as soon as they appeal to others for sympathy they condemn themselves to a life of continually trying to win pity perhaps everything went smoothly until circumstances suddenly took a turn for the worse or perhaps you suddenly suffered some physical disability or illness but as soon as you have the idea of depending on others to help you through your soul is giving in to defeat instead accept bravely whatever fate throws at you and be determined to overcome it number 6 determination and will power open up a path your determination to overcome whatever fate has thrown in your way does not mean you need to undertake something huge you just need to open a new path starting with something close at hand ask yourself what you are capable of doing and what you can achieve in your current situation if you find you are unable to use the gifts that you have developed up to now see if you have other abilities what are the qualities in you your siblings friends or teachers admired when you were young perhaps you have some hidden ability that even you have forgotten you possess it is possible to open up a path to the future by finding an ability that you have not yet developed to the fullest i remember watching a documentary on television about a man without any arms who used to paint with his feet he held a paint brush between his toes and created paintings that were of professional quality i was very impressed he could use his feet to do just about anything which demonstrates that if he loses our hands we are capable of developing our feet to the extent that they can be a substitute this is a real life example of someone who made a great effort 
many people if they were to lose the use of their hands would give up making any further effort to help themselves and ask others to look after them for the rest of their lives however the man on television was different he did not want to become dependent on others he was able to use what was left to him to find his own way forward with determination he liked painting so he decided to use his feet to do this and began to practice in the beginning he could not achieve much but gradually the more he tried the better the results until finally he was able to produce pictures a person without any arms could become a painter he was able to use his toes to hold the brushes and squeeze out the paints and he produced real art if this is possible then surely people who do not have any physical disabilities can achieve anything they put their minds to you probably received an education as a result of the support of your parents or guardians and if you are physically healthy there is no reason why you should not be able to achieve whatever you set your mind to today educational institutions have so many different courses offering a variety of qualifications and skills to help people achieve their goals people like to make excuses and say i can't do anything in my current circumstances or i don't have any talent but if they really wanted to achieve something it would be quite possible for them to get the qualification they needed to proceed towards their objective the only reason they have not achieved something is that they have not made sufficient effort or they lack the will power to reach their goals surprisingly the effort that people with disabilities make and the process they go through to achieve their goals seems all the more wonderful when you realize what they have succeeded in overcoming so when you hear about people with disabilities who get ahead despite adverse circumstances what should you do you who are overflowing with potential and energy should work harder and give love to many more people than you do at present undoubtedly this is possible the more privileged your circumstances the greater the opportunity you have to be of service to others i cannot stress enough how important it is always to remember this number 7 devise ways of becoming invincible i myself always keep in mind that the more privileged my circumstances the greater my opportunities to help others however though i intend to work harder i sometimes feel that there are physical limits to how much i can actually achieve faced with these limitations i can apply invincible thinking if my physical limitations prevent me from accomplishing more i need to use wisdom that is why i constantly try to devise new ways to achieve more this is something that you too can apply creativity or in other words invention and discovery are the vital elements of invincible thinking It is true to say that the development of our institute was based on a series of creative inventions and discoveries. Whenever we come up against a brick wall or a bottleneck, we did not push recklessly ahead. Instead, we always thought carefully about the next step. What does it mean to be subject to physical limitations? In the light of invincible thinking, it simply means that there are limits to the spheres of your activities so it is important to use wisdom when you come up against limitations at work for example first consider whether there is some part of your job that you do not have to do yourself can someone else do part of it for you this is one approach another is to train others to do particular task for you 
it is quite usual to have other people take over the parts of a job that you cannot do yourself and in doing this facilitating the overall development of the whole this was the way konosuke mat sushita open bracket 1894 till 1989 bracket close the prominent japanese entrepreneur who founded panasonic worked he did not enjoy good health and because he was not capable of doing everything himself he had no alternative but to entrust some of the works to others as a result back in the early 1930s he implemented a divisional system an autonomous management system for the first time in the world the system where the company is divided up into a number of divisions and each corporate divisions has its own administration is quite often studied in business administration today in this way by delegating responsibility to the manager of each division even large corporations l- run smoothly if a corporation operates with a top down system of management where everything is decided by person at the top it means that the entire operation is limited by the appellate abilities of that one person once the person at the top has reached the limits of his or her abilities the corporation can expand no further and development will grind to a halt however with this divisional system the leader of each section is like the president of a small company and the corporation is structured like a conglomerate of companies this system allowed matsushita to achieve results that would have been impossible alone because of his physical limitations matsushita created this system and now it has been adopted throughout the world this is a very good example of invincible thinking he was incapable of doing everything on his own so he turned this into an advantage as a result others were offered the opportunity to do more and in this way mat sushita was able to create an efficient workforce if the president of a corporation does everything himself his staff will not be given the opportunity to develop matsushita completely trusted his employees to fulfill the responsibilities he gave them and he let them get on with the job he thought that everyone had ability and he gave people free reign they were sure to create something wonderful this resulted in creation of a huge company employing hundreds of thousands of people the same thing happened when he created branch offices when matsushita decided to create a new branch some 300 miles from the head office he was not able to manage it directly he said to a young man in his 20s i am sorry i cannot take the train down there to help you so you will have to carry on without me then he sent the young man down to run the new office through experience matsushita came to understand that by trusting people and leaving them to get on with this things themselves they would develop into efficient workers here is a precedent you can follow you should not let your limitations you should not let your own limitations restrict the work or activities of the whole what people consider to be limitations are simply lack of ideas people do not lack the ability to do the work rather they lack ingenuity and creativity this is something i would like you to think about you may currently feel that you are in the top form but things will not stay this way forever when things do not seem to be going well instead of carrying carrying on in the same old way you need to pause and ask yourself if there are other ways of getting around the situation It is always the case that whenever you try to expand the scope of your work you will no longer be able to do everything yourself so you will need the help of others Number 8 transcend individual limitation 
a good idea will grow only if you can find someone to work with suppose your job was selling fish from a truck in the streets if you felt content doing just this you would probably spend your whole life selling fish however if you were to analyze your business you might discover ways of getting more people to come and buy from you you might realize that if you went to a certain residential area between 4 and 5 o'clock in the evening you would have quite a number of customers compared to selling in other parts of town you could earn 5 times more there for that one hour once you realize that the sales potential of a particular time and place it would be only natural to make a point of going there every day between those times then you might wonder if there was any other time of day when demand was higher and find a lot of people arrive home and realize that they have forgotten to buy groceries Once you have discovered a potential demand you might go looking for a suitable location to open a shop and find a place where people wanted to buy fish at a certain time in the evening in this way you would be able to achieve much higher sales than if you could just drove around in a random fashion waiting for people to come out and buy from you after a while you would be in a position to employ an assistant If there were two of you you would be able to sell more fish in the same amount of time If you went to residential areas where people came in great numbers you would not be able to keep up you would have to serve customers add up bills and give people their change If you made them wait too long they would stop coming to you and buy their fish from other shops or the supermarkets instead However if you had an assistant You could concentrate on serving customers while your assistant added up the bills and handled the money. By dividing your work in this way, you would more than double your efficiency. As sales increased, you could employ even more people. Up to this point, you may have had just one truck, but then you would buy a second and a third. As time passed, you would increase the number of people in each truck expanding your business until you had perhaps five trucks working for you working on your own you would only have had been able to buy small quantities of fish each day at the fish market but as your business grew you would be able to buy in bulk meaning you could get better quality fish at lower rates on your own you may have been buying 20 or 30 mackerel a day but as business expanded you would buy 100 200 or even 500 mackerel putting you in a good position to negotiate with the supplier and bring the price down then because you could buy your supply of fish at a less expensive rate you could also sell it at a more cheaply satisfying your customers as an organization expands it can support more and more employees and improve the service it provides satisfying even more customers the bigger it gets the more cheap people can buy and the better the quality of the products in this way everyone is happy then a positive cycle begins and things can only get better companies that started out from nothing and grew rapidly over a period of 20 or 30 years or which were started by a couple of workers and grew to employ thousands are usually examples of businesses that benefited from the positive cycle it all boils down to whether you are whether or not you can spot potential people who are unable to imagine various possibilities will spend 30 or 40 years selling fish on their own these those who give a lot of thought to where and when it would be best to set up shop what they would do what they would need to do to satisfy customers and how to serve them better will develop and benefit from a positive cycle everything will go well for this businesses this is why in the same line of business one company will do well while another will not
there is always a place where the path divides and the outcome will depend on whether you can spot an opportunity and devise ingenious method 80 to 90% of those who are unable to develop sales are limiting their business activities because of their own limitations there are businesses that have been in the family for generations and some of them are only concerned about maintaining the status quo as long as this is their attitude their business will not develop basically most stores such as coffee shops sandwich bars and hamburger restaurants sell products of roughly the same quality but while some of these shops develop into nationwide chains other remain small local stores there are definite reasons for these differences The truth is that the shops that expand are those where creative thinking have been used to accomplish what is beyond the capacity of just one person. Number 9 two secrets for achieving success. What I wanted to say in the various previous section is this. You might feel right now that you cannot move forward in life, but could the reason be simply that you are struggling alone? there is a limit to what one person can accomplish single handedly so if you really want to succeed in this world you have to have other people on your side supporting and helping you you need to have as many people as possible willing to help essentially there are two secrets to success number 1 find the demand the first secret is always to be on the lookout for things people want you would constantly have your antenna up so as to be sensitive to what people need businesses start wherever a demand exists companies that achieved rapid growth have always been started by someone who sensed a demand and set about meeting that where there is a demand there is always work to be done if you are working hard but find it difficult to make a profit it is probably because there is no demand for what you are supplying For instance if you are running an educational institution but not many students are coming and you find it increasingly difficult to make ends meet it is likely that there is insufficient demand and you are not providing what people want the same is true in other types of businesses if you cannot make a profit it is probably because the product you are supplying does not meet local demand there is a traditional japanese cake ima gawaki that has been a filling of su- sweet bean paste and recently one cake shop started creating new types with custard chocolate and a variety of other fillings as a result the cake shop is doing extremely well and making quite a considerable profit in its original form the traditional japanese sweet bean cake appealed only to the elderly and small children but when the proprietor started making cakes with cream and chocolate fillings people of other age groups began to buy them too the reason the cake shop has done so well is simply that it meets the need of many more people this illustrates the fact that if there is a demand for a certain product there is work to be done this is a true whether you are working for yourself for a company or at home even at home you can try and discover your family needs if there is a demand then there is always something worthwhile that needs doing this is what you should always be on lookout for number 2 think about future sorry think about further development next you need to consider whether this demand can be used as a springboard to help you achieve further development always think of ways to continue developing your business if you do this you will be surprised to discover that there are always many possibilities going back to the example of the shop that invented cakes with cream and chocolate fillings after their initial success the cake shop did not create any more new products the owner was content with the success and stop thinking about new products and the result was a limit on further development 
द ओनर्स आर ट्रैप्ड बाय द कॉन्फाइंस ऑफ देयर अर्लियर सक्सेस एंड आर नॉट टैपिंग इन टू फर्दर बिजनेस पोटेंशियल नाव दैट दे हैव बिकम सक्सेसफुल दे मस्ट यूज दिस एज अ स्प्रिंग बोर्ड टू अचीव ग्रेटर सक्सेस इट इज ऑलवेज पॉसिबल टू एडवांस टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेज नंबर टेन फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेंथ प्रोवाइड्स द पावर टू ओवरकम डिफिकल्टीज ऑल दो यू मे थिंक दैट योर वरीज आर मोस्टली साइकोलॉजिकल सरप्राइजिंगली सेवेंटी टू एटी परसेंट ऑफ दोज वरीज कुड बी सॉल्व बाय अचीविंग इकोनॉमिक स्टेबिलिटी आई कैन अश्योर यू दैट इफ यू वे टू अर्न टेन टाइम्स मोर योर प्रेजेंट इनकम एटी परसेंट ऑफ योर वरीज वुड डिसअपियर यू वीड you would be amazed at how true this is suppose a family complains that they will they always feel tired if they look at this the answer may be quite simple the reason may be that their daily commute takes so long as they do not have a great deal of money the family bought a house far from the city and as a result they have to commute long distance every day it is hardly surprising that they feel tired all the time If the family had some money they could find many different solutions they could buy a car or they could pay some someone to drive them round this kind of problem cannot can can be solved only with money but because of a financial lag they become overwhelmed with complaining again a difficult situation may arise if a child or a parent is ill but this could this too could be solved quite simply by hiring someone to help another worry that many parents share is the sense that their child is not doing well at school but in some cases it is simply that the children are not receiving a good education if they had more money they could put their children through top notch schools but because they are unable to do that their children may not be reaching their academic potential if they had more money their sons and daughters would be able to go to better schools in light of this we see that the cause of most domestic problems is financial this has been particularly true in recent years so instead of simply worrying you need to take make an effort to find alternatives and solutions to your predicament if your career seems to have come to a standstill and you can only expect your salary to rise with an increase in the gnp you then need to either learn to be satisfied with what you have or try and find some way of improving your circumstances suppose you are married and your wages do not seem like to rise perhaps you or your partner can find some way of earning a secondary income maybe one of you have some hidden talent that could be put to use to improve the situation there are people who have written books in their spare time and to their surprise have found that what they have written sells and brings much money there are others who discover that they had some talent they did not know they possessed or who have developed skills which as a result has brought about a sudden increase in salary there is no telling what will lead to prosperity it is always important to ask yourself if there is any way you can open up a new path before you try not to see your present difficulties as insurmountable rather always be on the lookout for a chance to get ahead and for ingenious methods of overcoming difficulties you should not let yourself be swept away by the tides of adversity nor should you just complain about your situation instead try to accept adversity and use it as a springboard to find ways of moving forward and making further progress number 11 discover the invincible self is it possible that you are putting limits on your own abilities are you allowing yourself to be controlled by the past are you holding on to fixed ideas or assumptions about yourself if this is in the case unfortunately you will end up living your entire life according to those fixed ideas people who put limits on themselves will never become more than they think they are it is important always to believe that 
you have the potential to do better than you are now as i have explained over and over at every opportunity the power of the will is very significant you are what you think is an intern eternal truth so it is important that you make increase use of the power of the will from now on there is one facet in particular of the power of the will that i would like to consider i have talked about financial stability and i have said that when you are faced with a problem that stems from lack of money you should make an effort to overcome it however another problem that seems to trouble a lot of people is an inferiority complex connected to educational achievements or educational background perhaps this is troubling you right now the fact that you were unable to go on to a particular high school or university decades ago may be preying on your mind perhaps you have lived your whole life in its shadow there are many people still worrying about their educational background 20 or 30 years on however if you still have an inferiority complex after 20 or 30 years it is only natural for others to consider your educational background unsatisfactory because you yourself continue to regard it as such there are many people in this world who have managed to make a success of their lives despite the fact that they did not receive any formal education after graduating from junior college junior high school i am sure they did not say to themselves i did not manage to go to senior high school because i am not smart enough so i can only do menial jobs in one major japanese global trading company there was a man who did not go to senior high school and nevertheless finally became vice president of the company responsible for all finances he managed to achieve this position despite a lack of formal education which indicates that he must have made two or three times more effort than anyone else to make up for his lack of knowledge there are also a lot of people who suffer an inferiority complex because they were unable to keep up with their university studies it is quite common for people today to have a complex about their lack of intellectual ability however if something that happened years ago is your only excuse for failing now then you cannot complain that you have been treated unfairly it is what you have been able to do and what you have achieved since then which is important most people study for an average of 4 years at university and no matter how hard they work while they are there the amount they can learn in such a short time is quite limited even if you find learning difficult if you study for 10 years you will be able to master what someone else learned in 4 if you cannot grasp it completely in 10 years then surely you can manage it in 20 no matter how difficult you find learning if you continue to make an effort for 20 years you will certainly be able to master any subject so what is important is how you have lived since you ha- completed your education and whether you have achieved the sort of results that will imbue you with confidence in the majority of cases people tend to use a lack of education as an excuse however i must point out that their weakness is not their inadequate education but the fact that their thinking remains stuck in the past if you are really upset and feel your education was inadequate it is quite important to make an effort to compensate for it and to put in the time to do this in most cases if you spend three times as long as others you should be able to achieve your goal if someone else can accomplish something in two or three years then there is absolutely no reason why you should not be able to accomplish it in 
what prevents you from accomplishing this is your lack of effort and conviction everyone suffers from some sort of inferiority complex if you live your life consumed by your own inadequacies then inevitably others will consider you merely someone who suffers from some sort of inferiority complex only when you make sufficient effort to overcome feelings of inferiority can you finally cast them off i hope you will not use these sorts of feelings as an excuse people who lack formal education share one characteristic they have difficulty making generalization and grasping an overall picture you may ha- you may wonder why this is the reason is that after they leave school they work in one specialized job or they experience only one field of work in many cases they have only thought about their speciality because they have not had the opportunity to be exposed to a basic general education they have difficulty seeing the broader perspective just as the branches of a tree cannot grow without the trunk they are unable to broaden their perspective because they have not received a basic education this is their weakness If you are worried that your weakness lies in intelligence firstly do not complain that your abilities are limited instead try to make an effort to learn to adopt a wide wider perspective and to achieve some understanding of a wide range of topics once you have managed to do this you will find that there is no longer any need to suffer the inferiority complex at the institute for research in human happiness we have opportunity to learn the truth about through level seminars that consist of three different levels of fest and the result of these tests do not always reflect a person's academic background there are a lot of people who have studied hard at school but who at times goes on becomes less discerning on the other hand there are many who at first do not seem so bright but later prove to be quite sharp these people are not aware of how they have changed in the 10 or 20 years since they graduated but the results people produce reveal how they have trained themselves intellectually since graduating from school I sincerely hope that you are not limiting yourself and I truly believe that you become what you think you are integrate this into your life today and manifest your thoughts by making the necessary effort progress steadily one step at a time as if you were climbing steps or the rungs of a ladder one at a time as you continue doing this I guarantee that a path will open up before you and you will discover the self that is always victorious and invincible part 2 coming soon